Okay, so this is how it was, and uh, and by the way, right? I mean, you all know that. Uh, for example, right? I mean, if uh, okay, in this case, right? We are taking we are taking R to have kind of complex entries also. So, uh, given that, uh, um, what do you say? Uh, what was it that I wanted to say? Uh, so, here, sir, eigen values, of course, right? Eigen values of of R are real and uh, uh, are greater than or equal to zero because R is anyway a positive semi-definite matrix, right? It's a kind of a covariance. So it's like it's like saying that <coughs> you know if you do if you take any any x, you know, uh, which is which is non-zero, do like x Hermitian R x, right? And then uh, <coughs> given the fact that R itself has the form some expectation, some let's say y y Hermitian, okay? Because it's actually a covariance matrix, right? So when I say R, I mean it's a it's a covariance. So then y y Hermitian x, so you can push this as x Hermitian y, okay? And then y Hermitian x, and uh, this is of course a scalar, right? So so right. So if you call some z is equal to x Hermitian y, which is a scalar, then this is z z star, okay? which is like you know which is which is always a number which is actually greater than or equal to 0 right it will be like uh, let's say magnitude z square and so we know this okay so uh, and because of because of which we know that r is psd and therefore right if you try to if you try to do uh, right so so given the fact that hex hermitian rx is actually uh, is always a number you know greater than or equal to zero if you take x to be right, and since since this relation is true for all x, right, and if you take x to be the eigenvector itself, then clearly x Hermitian R x is some lambda x, right, is kind of greater than or equal to zero. Lambda x Hermitian x is actually is a number greater than or equal to zero, and since you have taken x to be the eigenvector, right, x Hermitian x is non-zero. Therefore, lambda itself is a number which is actually which is uh, greater than or equal to 0 right these are all things that you know so when somebody gives you a covariance matrix know that its eigen values are real it's, its eigen values are uh, have a value greater than or equal to 0 so so all of this kind of makes sense in, you know, in the sense that energy and all that right, that we are talking about right all of that makes sense now coming back to okay well, what i wrote the other day so we said that uh, that you know that we, that we have we have uh, we have let's say samples from some sort of a random vector u right so we have this class of examples, right, and and this entire entire class is being say uh, being kind of say uh, being you know represented by u, and uh, let us say this has some covariance r, this has some mean mu, uh, m maybe I'll use m. Okay, so the idea is that if you take uh, if you kind of do a transformation, right, similar to similar to the case, right, which you have done in the, with respect to a data independent transform, we did some v is equal to a times u, right, there. Now a similar transformation, right? We would like to do now on u, but now we are, we are going to use it on on say all the samples of u, right? Uh, because u by itself, right? I mean, it's not simply one sequence or something, right? U u kind of say represents this entire entire class now. Therefore, what we would like to do is we would like to do a transformation something like v, okay? V which is which will again be a random vector, right? U is a random vector with some mean and uh, mean and covariance, mean m and covariance r. So we want to do something like psi and then u minus m okay u minus m because we would like to make the data zero mean because u u by itself need not be zero mean data so we so we like to make it zero mean okay so we make the data zero mean and then what is the psi now the rows of psi uh, psi contain the or for example or you know maybe right we'll go with the columns of the columns of psi hermitian right r r the eigen vectors of r Okay, and this comes from, of course, you know, uh, the original theorem that I said, right? What is called, uh, what is called, this a spectral theorem for normal matrices. So where we said that if uh, this one matrix is normal, then it is uh, unitarily diagonalizable, which means that you can write R as some psi, right? I think this we did that, that day, right? So if you do, if you if you act uh, psi on R from the left and psi Hermitian on the right, right? Then this is going to say diagonalize R. So 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 it is that psi, okay, that that I have taken here. So where we know that the columns of psi Hermitian contain the eigenvectors of R, so columns of psi Hermitian are the eigenvectors of R. Right. 
So, psi is of course a matrix ok. So, u is a vector and m is a vector. So, therefore, clearly right if you try to if you try to see after you do the transformation right what will happen to this random vector v clear that uh, mean of v is 0 because mean of u is m and then if you look at expectation v v Hermitian ok that will be uh, expectation v which is psi u minus m then v Hermitian is u minus m Hermitian uh, psi Hermitian. Right, and uh, since expectation is simply linear operator, right, we can actually send it inside. Then it becomes expectation u minus m, uh, u minus m Hermitian, psi Hermitian. Okay, then it means that you've got like, and since uh, u, okay, so the so the r is r is exactly this, right? Expectation u minus m, u minus m Hermitian is r. Therefore, this means that this is equal to psi r psi Hermitian, okay, which we know is simply simply a diagonal. A form of R, right? So, so we know. That so, so the idea is that, okay, because we started with this, with this result, which came from the spectral theorem, right? We started with that result, and uh, and then if you use that psi here to do the transformation, okay, then uh, so so the point is, what kind of a transformation should we then be doing on U, right? In order to be able to arrive at this as a diagonal, so diagonal, uh, diagonal R. So the transformation that we that we kind of need to do is this. If we do this transformation, then we can see that expectation VV Hermitian, which is which is the covariance of V, right, is simply uh, is simply diagonal. That means you've you've been able to say decorrelate the data, so it, so which is exactly what we want, right? We want to go from the standard basis to a to a different basis, which is also orthonormal. But then in that basis, right, we want this uh, we want this diagonalization to happen, and that diagonalization does happen, and then a decorrelation, right, which is what we call as a decorrelation. And uh, the whole point is, right? Uh, we can actually, we can actually reconstruct now. Okay, if you're interested in u, we do the same thing, right? Just as we did there, u is equal to a Hermitian v. Similar to that, we can do like u minus m is equal to psi Hermitian, which is uh, which is the inverse of uh, psi. So psi Hermitian v, or we can get u as psi Hermitian v plus m, right? So so this mean, of course, right? We had to kind of add it back, okay? Because we removed it from u in uh, from v, right? When we did v, we removed the mean. Therefore, the mean now gets in, right? And uh, you can actually reconstruct your u. Now, the uh, now in this case, of course, it will all be exact, right? Because if you are using all the all these eigenvectors, and the idea is that uh, uh, you can actually, right? You can afford to you can afford to not use all the eigenvectors, right? Now we can ask, right? Uh, since see, as uh, you know, uh, as opposed to the data independent case, right? Here, all your eigenvectors are kind of see coming from R, right? Okay, this psi is uh, psi is kind of say special for that R, correct? So since these eigenvectors, have, uh, since uh, since these eigenvectors are kind of uh, have been say, derived from this kind of a data, right? A data samples that you have with you. Uh, so in so in reality, right? What you would do is, right? Somebody anyway. Uh, okay, so maybe when I show that example, I'll show you right in reality how you do it. So for the time being, let's assume that somebody gave you R. Okay. So, since you know R, now you could actually compute all of this because in the earlier data independent at all, we never worried about covariance of the data or anything, right? You gave me a sequence u, I would just apply a data independent transform, give you a v, right? I could not even ask what will be the error, right? That I'll make. I mean, if let's say if I don't use all of all of the all of the eigen I mean, eigenvectors in a hair mission, right? I, this is this is typically n cross n, right? If you use n cross one, now suppose suppose I chose only m of those columns, right? Then it means that I've got something like n cross m, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, right. So, uh, so now if I try to if I try to use only only m number of these columns, which means if I use only m number of these eigenvectors, then what will be the error? Right? We can't say anything because uh, right for for each u, it can it can start to change. But here, with respect to this uh, kind of a KL transform or the PCA, we can ask the same question, but then we'll have an answer for this. Because right now, suppose I ask right in general, how well will I do if I sort of knock out knock off some of the eigenvectors. Now, how do I knock off? I know the eigenvalues with respect to each of these eigenvectors and therefore, right, I will know the significance of each one of them because if you see here, right, so, so you are, so you can think of this as a linear combination of the eigenvectors sitting in psi Hermitian, right. So, V is like a column. So, you can think of this as V 0 times the first eigenvector plus V 1 times the second eigenvector all the way, use all of them and then add mean. But instead of this, right, suppose I say that, uh, suppose we say that, you know, that we do not use all of them. And instead, right, we we do something like v. Suppose I call this as an m cross one vector instead of n cross one, 
right? Ideally, I should have, I should have, I should have got an n, cro n cross one as v. But suppose I choose to just do m cross one, which then means that when I and actually multiply psi, right? I said I'll do my u minus what is that uh, m, right? Now u is n cross one, of course. This is n cross one, and therefore psi, of course, clearly is you know m cross n, right? So it's like saying that you've got like m rows in psi and not not n rows. Okay, so when you actually do that, right? You 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 kind of uh, so such an operation is you can think of it as a transformation. I mean, as a transform coefficient, it is what we call right. So we call v as a transform coefficient. Now we can uh, right. We can even we can even afford to just include the first m eigenvectors in psi Hermitian, not use all of them, right? So this we arrive by ignoring. Okay, ignore ignore insignificant or you know ignore less significant eigenvectors okay based on their eigen values so so from now on we'll assume that everything is ordered okay so the eigen vectors so the so the eigen vectors are ordered right according to their is significant so the guy which is most significant is the first one that means it has the highest eigen value then second then third right so so ignore less significant eigen vectors and uh, try to do a reconstruction okay which would simply use uh, which would which would only use the first m and not all of n all the n eigenvectors. Okay, so if you ignore the less significant eigenvectors, uh, and suppose you say reconstruct, so this uh, so this transform coefficient is what we will call it. But then this is also what is called uh, called a dimensionality reduction. So people, right, when they talk about PCA, one of the things, right, that they like to talk about is doing some kind of uh, kind of a dimensionality reduction. So it's like saying that you know you could uh, it could it would ideally allow you to go from a from a kind of a very high dimensional you know feature space to or in this case the image space to a kind of a low dimensional feature space right so i, I will mm, uh, so this dimensionality part right we'll talk about it later but for the time being we'll simply look upon it as some kind of a transform coefficient right uh, that we derive but earlier right we never we never did something like this we were not truncating we were always looking at exact reconstruction but in this case because we can say something about the whole class right we can actually try doing this and if you do this then when you reconstruct Right, you will have your u hat, let's say, right, because I no longer can get my u back, so I'll write it as u hat, which is n cross one, and then uh, I'll have uh, psi Hermitian, but now let me call this as uh, so what this is like n cross m, right? Psi Hermitian will be n cross m, and then this multiplies your uh, v, okay, which is m cross one plus m, which is n cross n, n cross one, huh? Uh huh. Correct. By class, I mean that, for example, all the samples, right, that are sitting in that class from which you derived your R and mean. Okay, so it's like saying, suppose I had face, human faces, right, and suppose I collected lots and lots of human faces. I computed the covariance R. I computed the mean mu. So I'll have something like an average human face, which is like the mean image, and then I'll have what kind of spread it has, and then and then after I do the let's say eigenvector eigenvalue decomposition. Then suppose I don't choose. See, what might happen is some of the variations, right, that are happening across this is because because of maybe not. See, right, think of the most significant eigenvectors trying to capture the 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 real structure of the face, and maybe you know, and maybe there are lots and lots of eigenvectors, right, which don't even mean anything. I mean, so those variations are are things that you can ignore. Ignore in the sense that, right, I mean, if you ignore it, right, you would like to know what right what will happen if they start ignoring. Okay, because it's like saying that you know not let's say every eigenvector sitting there is uh, there is going to say you know kind of say significant, because the variations that happen across faces you may still be able to reconstruct that is something reasonable with which you may be able to work by not using all the all the let's say eigen faces, or the you know eigen vectors right. So so in that sense this is like an this is like an this is like an ensemble property. So over the entire class right we can ask suppose but all this assumes that you have a good estimate of R which means that you know it assumes that right, you have lots and lots of you have collected lots and lots of examples you have been able to estimate robustly some covariance now you can ask if I reconstruct right uh, with with let's say fewer not not with all of them but then you know fewer in the sense that sometimes it can be drastic right? by fewer we are not talking about 10 20 less for example right if you look at an image let's say it is 64 square okay minimum right that's the kind of face you would look at so that's like what 4096 right now if you if you look at it people have done this covariance analysis and then they'll say we'll take this say top uh, top is a hundred eigenvectors so it's like you know 4096 to 100 somebody may even take 50 again right what they do is they will kind of look at the significance of the eigen values right typically you say that i'll go down till maybe i reach a fraction of the maximum eigen value you may say you may you may kind of cap it at uh, whatever 40 percent 20 percent 5 percent 
okay it depends on the application but then what has been found is most of the time not just with faces and all right any time there is a correlation that is high that you might be able to you might be able to know throw away lots of those eigen because they they don't really they are not really the ones that are carrying the information the ones that are the most significant ones are the ones that are carrying information what i wanted to tell was so, so if you do this kind of a reconstruction which is not exact anymore <coughs> because you can only get an approximation of u now but if you ask what will be the norm of u minus u hat uh, right u hat square in a sort of a frobenius okay in this case it's simply a euclidean norm right because u is a vector u hat is a vector now now if you ask right now in this case okay until now when we when we did the data independent thing we could never tell anything i mean suppose i just said uh, you know hina kind of dft suppose suppose i don't use all the uh, you know so you look at phi hermitian suppose i choose only a few of them what kind of an error will i get you can't say anything right you know if i take a u of a certain type it will get something you'll you change u you'll get something else but here okay you can you can actually you can show that this is equal to I mean, when we do svd I'll, I'll show an alternative way of doing this so right i don't want to prove this but you know, this is like some summation lambda i where let's say uh, where i is equal to m plus 1 to n okay that means all the all the all the eigen values right that you actually left out okay which which is which is a very kind of a strong result right it's like saying that okay it doesn't mean that you know every time you take an image from that class and if you do a do a reconstruction will kind of hit this value it means that if you if you really take a lot if you take lots and lots of images and we compute the average error so this is like a mean square error okay this is in a sort of you know a mean square sense because this is over the whole class right so over the whole class on the average you will get you will i mean you can you can expect that right at least at least you have some sort of you know a ballpark kind of a figure and right? when you are on you're not you're not entirely blind to what will happen right so you know that on the average i'll i'll do only only so only so bad or if you really if you really ignore the good eigen values then it mean that right, you'll really do badly or else you will know that even if i ignore then right i may not be i may not be you know i may no it may not be such a such a bad thing at all no this kind of an this kind of a mean square error number we don't even have for the data independent cases we can't say anything right in general as to what will happen but in this case as far as a pc klt is concerned we can actually have this figure but all of this assumes that we have been able to compute r and mean and all pretty well okay this all banks on these statistics if you do badly there then all this all this will will, will get affected okay if there are no doubts right then what i thought i will do is uh, okay now one of the things right i mean you might say that all of this is so nice that i mean why don't we then use it right the problem is klt there is no there is no fast algorithm okay because first of all the basis images are the basis uh, the eigen eigen vectors right which are the basis images are uh, data dependent right so for example if i change the class right i'll get i'll get another set of eigen vectors if i go from face to something else let's say i go from face to leaves i'll get something else to go from leaves to something like tools i'll get something else right so this so so, so there's nothing like a fixed uh, you know this one so as you keep keep hopping from one class to another you have to tell the other person what is the basis image right that you're using then this notion of separability right as you go to a, go to a higher this one dimension also is generally not there okay uh, separability notion but some people just assume it okay so separability notion <coughs> notion uh, not there okay in general it's not there but sometimes right what will happen is see for example i mean you know if you think about the markov one process that we had for 1d right which was like is like rho par whatever m minus m prime mod right this is what we had now you can so some people will will you uh, know when they go to a higher dimension they will kind of assume that the r right that you will get let me put this as some script r it's simply the rho the r that you get for 1d which is kronecker r which is like saying that you know your r if you think about this is r m comma n uh, and maybe m prime comma n prime right then they'll assume that this follows the model into rho n minus n prime mod okay this is something that they will impose okay one doesn't know whether it will actually happen but if it does happen that right, when you go from a lower dimension to a higher dimension then all of this you can do for example for example right, if you want to go from go from uh, similar to the case that, that we did from 1d to see uh, sort of a 2d then you can actually you can kind of reuse the basis but then it's not always true that right such a thing will happen so the separability notion is not automatic uh, fast algorithms just don't exist 
right and uh, and therefore right it ends up being so if you ask and then why why would i even bother about it then like i said right in the beginning so the klt right is really really a benchmark right so it is used as a benchmark so anything else that can come close to it right will be nice because because on the one hand you will have fast algorithms like we said right a dft if r is a circle end so it would actually mean that dft will be the klt so which will then mean that it'll have it'll have all these all these uh, all these kind of see, nice things that we said it'll have maximum energy packing efficiency it'll have data decorrelation that is 100% then you know this kind of a uh, norm error right on the average the mean square error notion right you will know you know all of that and on top of that because it's a data independent transform you'll also know you also know that a dft can be run very fast you have fast algorithms for the separability notion is there all of that right similarly dct right if you if you right if you if you do it for let's say 1d uh, no this one a markov process then we know that uh, no a first order markov process then we know that this guy will come close to being the klt and therefore right so so in that sense this still as far as the coding part is concerned right where you want to uh, where you want to analyze from that from that sort of a perspective then you only use this as some kind of something right that you kind of that you put way up there and then try to see which other transform even tends to come close uh, see when i say that we don't talk about data data <coughs> i said yeah, data independent for a class right yeah because because data independent means itself means that i do not even want to know from where from what class it is coming right the moment you say data i mean otherwise otherwise it won't be it won't be data independent if i if i make it dependent on the class it will no longer be data independent right the very notion of data independent is that i don't care from where it is coming i don't care whether it's a human face or whether it's a it's some other thing whether it's simply a natural scene i don't i don't want to really worry about from where it is coming the moment you start worrying about examples from that and all then it means that it means that you are fine tuning yourself to a particular class in which case you will end up end up right with this i mean if you had enough data then this is what you would end up doing the whole idea is a data independent uh, nice thing is that right i mean those those have these uh, no those are those are fast and separable all those things are there and on top of that right you don't you don't need to worry about what sh what should be my this one basis but if you can show that something that is data independent can be an optimal transform that's that's very good no so that is where this equivalence to klt makes sense because if you can somehow show that something else that is data independent comes very close to a klt then it means that you rather pick that than pick something else right so so this is like a this kind of helps you right in order to know what transform to pick i mean if you knew if you knew that your c data was following a certain characteristic and then if you knew that you know a certain sort of you know independent transform would diagonalize a covariance corresponding to that then uh, then you can talk about so yeah this is all about this is all about ensemble characteristics right this is not about one one particular example or something this is kind of an ensemble characteristic okay now uh, the uh, but then right uh, that that uh, that uh, that by itself right, it doesn't mean that we limit uh, klt or pca just for this okay as far as the transform part is concerned because we started with image transform right we wanted to talk about this because this and the svd are like you know two things which are which you can say depend depend on the on on uh, on your on your image uh, but whereas yeah, whether the whether the others and all were kind of totally independent right now one more uh, but then right that is as far as the as far as you look at unitary transforms and all